A little while ago, I was forwarded an email with a video of spectacular fireworks in front of Mount Fuji. The original email said that the fireworks had been intended for the 2020 Olympics opening ceremony that had been cancelled due to the pandemic, and so Japan decided to share the fireworks anyway. It's such a great story, and they really are impressive fireworks. And that might have been the end of it, except something felt off to me. Actually, a number of things felt off to me, and that's what gave me pause. Which is the point of this whole video. Pause. Verb. To stop temporarily for the purpose of deliberation or on account of doubt or uncertainty. And I think that in our super-connected, internet-fueled world, the art of the pause is of utmost importance. So what gave me pause with that fireworks video? Well, first, it was forwarded to me in an email that had clearly already been forwarded multiple times and had no clear original source, no record of who or when it came from. And then I remembered that the Olympics and most live stuff on TV usually has those little watermarks showing it's the Olympics or saying what network you're watching, and this video didn't. And then I noticed the music in the video is the well-known and very European William Tell Overture, which would be an unusual choice for Japan, as Olympic host countries typically like to feature their own cultural heritage. And then I realized that this fireworks display wouldn't actually work very well from a stadium, where Olympics opening ceremonies and their fireworks tend to be held. And then I realized there are firework designs and colors in there that I've never even seen in real life. And there doesn't seem to be any smoke. And finally, this is exactly the kind of feel-good story that pulls at your heartstrings, and that marketers and influencers know pulls at your heartstrings. I don't know which of these things first gave me pause, but once I paused, those observations all came spilling out. There are four parts to a good pause. First, noticing the impulse to pause. It'll be weak and faint, just a niggling doubt or a tentative question at the back of your mind. Notice it. Second, heeding that urge and actually pausing. Before you react, whether in delight or anger or simply passing by and going on with your life, which is itself a reaction, pause. Third is the pause itself, the deliberation on account of doubt or uncertainty. This part can be short or long. That's up to you and to the reason for your pause, though you probably don't want it to be too long. In the case of the fireworks, it took me a single Google search of Japan Mount Fuji fireworks to bring up an associated press article about how the fireworks were confirmed to be a computer simulation, and how the video was originally posted to YouTube as early as 2015. Your pause might take less time, or more, or you might decide you don't care enough to deliberate and you just want to get on with your life. Which brings us to, fourth, what happens after the pause, what you do with the results of your deliberation, whatever they are. Maybe instead of speaking out in anger, you remain quiet. Maybe instead of going quietly on with your life, you get righteously angry. And maybe you remain just as delighted as before. Here are two recent lighthearted moments where I paused. An article mentioned in passing that soap operas are called that because they were originally sponsored by soap manufacturers, which sounds too good to be true, so I paused. But quick searches of a number of reliable sources confirm it is true, so I'll pass along the factoid to you. The soap in soap opera does in fact refer to soap. My second pause? A tweet about how Eye of Newt, famously used as a witchcraft ingredient in Shakespeare's Macbeth, was actually just a codename for a common kitchen spice. I thought, wow, I never knew that, that's pretty cool. And then immediately, it sounds too perfect. I paused. And then spent five hours trying to find the original sources to confirm or deny the quoted fact. And I couldn't find any. I mean, I did find some awesome 16th century herbalist books that tell you about all the ailments you can cure with cabbage, and lots of plants are named for resemblances to animals, but the articles and blog posts I found that claim that Eye of Newt is a code word are mostly personal blogs or websites, rather than established reputable institutions. And none of them cited any sources for their claims except, if anything, other internet blogs. In fact, they all seem to share a similar list of secret witchcraft ingredient code words copied over and over. It's possible the lists are similar because they're based in truth, or maybe parts are correct and parts aren't. Or maybe it's all made up. I couldn't figure it out. So if you have a primary source that confirms Eye of Newt was or wasn't a code word for mustard seed, please let me know. This might all seem a bit silly, but I'm sure you can think of plenty of more serious and consequential, and possibly not true, claims being made online. And because they pull at our heartstrings or stoke our anger, it's easy to believe them and act based on them, because we want to. I mean, the examples in this video were all shared with me by very smart, thoughtful people. The person who sent me the fireworks email I know was sending it to brighten my day. And the point of the pause is not to be a buzzkill or a, well actually, but rather to allow ourselves not to get caught up in manufactured or manipulative buzz and spread it. To give ourselves a moment before we jump into action, to make sure it's the action we actually want to take. The pause. 
is a superpower of modern life. It's the second chance, the extra life, the opportunity to act not reflexively on first impressions, but thoughtfully. It gives you a moment when you get to decide which alternate history of the universe you'd like to be in, the one where you react the way you'd been about to before you paused, or the one where you react differently. Oh yeah, and you don't want to be pausing all the time and questioning everything you hear in the world around you. That would be exhausting and impossible. But your pause detector can be quietly on in the background a lot of the time, without affecting your daily life. Here are some quick tips for things that set off my pause detector. Is it a forwarded email with the original senders removed? Or a screenshot with the source removed? Or a social media post with no original source? Or really anything that has an unclear source? Or is it too good to be true? Does it pull at my heartstrings? Does it make me super angry? Does it try to convince me not to be angry and to be complacent? Is it something that supports my worldview, but comes from an unknown or unvetted source? Is it a really cool, super awesome, incredibly unbelievable story? Pause. In particular, I pause, even just briefly, if something is emotionally powerful. Marketers and propagandists know that inciting emotions is a powerful tool. And so do good storytellers and good leaders. Inspiring an emotional response isn't intrinsically good or bad, but if I notice someone or something is getting me to react emotionally, I take a moment to pause, and decide if I want to continue allowing that emotional inspiration into my life or not. Okay, so we've got a sponsor that's a really good match for this video. GiveWell, the nonprofit that researches and vets other charities for you. In particular, GiveWell searches out the nonprofits that immediately and directly benefit the most people's lives for the least money, like health and economic programs in developing countries. You can look at GiveWell's full charity recommendation list on their website, and you can also give directly to those charities or to a fund directed to the current top choices through GiveWell. 100% of your donation goes to the charities. On top of that, GiveWell is matching donations from first-time donors dollar for dollar up to $250. Click on the link in the description to donate and be sure to use fundraiser code MINUTEPHYSICS at checkout to make sure your donation gets matched. Again, use the code MINUTEPHYSICS and your donation to GiveWell's recommended charities will get matched up to $250.